I looked at upstart entrepreneurs, Larry Page, Jeff Bezos, Elon Musk, people who had built world-changing and possible businesses in near record time. People who score off the charts, highest in the world for overall life satisfaction and well-being are the people with the most flow in their lives. We are able, for the very first time, to peer under the hood of flow. We can see where it's coming from. Flow states are hackable. It turns out flow is eminently trainable. We're just using a small portion of our brain, say 10%. So ultimate performance, AKA flow, must be the full brain on overdrive, right? Turns out we actually had it exactly backwards. What does it take to do the impossible? What does it take to achieve paradigm shifting, never seen before breakthroughs consistently? I focused on those maverick innovators who turned science fiction ideas into science fact technology, who did the impossible of literally dreaming up the future. So what I discovered in all these domains is that it doesn't actually matter where you look. You could be talking about the action adventure sport athletes, you can be talking about business tycoons, you can be talking about technologists or artists, it doesn't matter. Every domain you find, ultimate human performance has the exact same signature. It is a state of consciousness known to researchers as flow. Flow is a technical term. As I mentioned earlier, it is technically defined as an optimal state of consciousness, one where we feel our best and we perform our best. More specifically, it refers to those moments of rapt attention and total absorption. We get so focused on the task at hand, everything else just disappears. Action and awareness will start to merge. Your sense of self will vanish. Time will dilate, which is a fancy way of saying it passes strangely. So sometimes, occasionally, it'll s slow down and you get that freeze frame effect from anybody who's been in a car crash. And more frequently, it speeds up and five hours go by in like five minutes. And throughout, all aspects of performance, both mental and physical, go through the roof. Flow is definable. And because it is definable, it is measurable. So we have extremely well-validated psychometric instruments to measure flow at this point. Flow is universal. It shows up in everyone, everywhere, provided certain initial conditions are met. And the vast majority, tens of thousands of people said, you know, when I'm at my best, I'm in this state and every idea, every action, every decision flows seamlessly, perfectly, effortlessly from the last. We're just using a small portion of our brain, say 10%. So ultimate performance, AKA flow, must be the full brain on overdrive, right? In flow, we're not using more of the brain, we're actually using less of the brain. The technical term for this is transient, meaning temporary, hypofrontality. It means to slow down, to shut down, to deactivate. And frontality is the prefrontal cortex. Now, this is an extremely powerful part of your brain. In flow, this portion of the brain shuts down. It's actually an efficiency exchange. The brain is trading energy it needs for attention and it's shutting down non-critical structures. When it shuts down the prefrontal cortex, all kinds of crazy things happen. Why does time pass so strangely in a flow state, for example? Time, it turns out, is calculated all over the prefrontal cortex. And as parts of it wink out, it can no longer separate past from present from future. We're plunged into a state researchers talk about as the deep now. Now, the deep now has a huge impact on performance. If you think about most of your fears, most of your anxieties, very few of them are in the right here, right now. They're usually horrible things that happened in the past that we'd like to avoid happening again in the present, or there's scary things that might, maybe could happen in the future. When we end up in the deep now, when time gets shut down in a flow state, anxiety disappears. Your stress hormones flood out of your system. The nervous system actually resets at this point. Same thing happens to your sense of self. So self is actually a network. It's a bunch of different structures in the prefrontal cortex that are linked together. And like any network, as parts of it start to wink out, the network collapses. As a result, our sense of self 
disappears. Again, huge impact on performance. When your sense of self disappears, your inner critic, that nagging always on to feed his voice in your head, your inner Woody Allen, in flow, Woody gets silent. So we experience this as liberation, as freedom. We are actually getting out of our own way, literally. Right? As a result, risk taking goes up. Creativity, because you're no longer doubting every one of your neat ideas, goes up. What we have discovered is that flow states have triggers. These are preconditions that lead to more flow. There are 20 of them in total, and I'm gonna talk about all of them in a second, but the first thing you need to know is the most obvious. Flow follows focus. It can only show up when all of our attention is focused in the right here, the right now. So that's what most of these triggers do. They drive attention into the now. For example, the first of the individual triggers, Passion. We hear a lot about passion these days. It's one of these great buzzwords, very mystical. The only reason passion matters is we pay more attention to those things we believe in, which drives flow, and flow drives performance. Risk. Why did action and adventure sport athletes experience such a spike in the 1990s? Because risk levels in action and adventure sports started going through the roof, and risk drives focus, drives flow. So a really important Thing to know about these flow triggers is not only do they exist, they're actually really easy to work with. The vast majority of people find flow doing knowledge work, using their brain, being creative, architecture, coding, writing. We know that flow in the arts, in technology, in science accounts for significant progress, major paradigm shifts, usually a flow state at the heart. In business, we have some of the most compelling data. So McKinsey, the global consultancy, did a 10-year study, and they found that top executives in flow are five times more productive than out of flow. Five times more productive is 500% more productive. It means you could go to work on Monday, take Tuesday through Friday off, and get as much done as your steady state peers. Interestingly, two days a week in flow, you are 1,000% more productive than the competition. In flow, we also get a huge boost in neurochemistry. So neurochemicals are literally nothing fancier than signaling molecules. It's one of the ways the brain talks to itself and talks to the body. And if you really want to understand why flow allows us to do the impossible, understanding these neurochemicals is key. Now, all five of them amplify performance. They boost physical performance. They will do everything from increased strength to deaden pain to amplify muscle reaction time. So besides being performance-enhancing chemicals, the five chemicals that show up in flow are pleasure drugs. In fact, they're the five most potent pleasure drugs the brain can produce. Flow is the only time it appears that we get all five at once, which is why flow is the most addictive state on Earth. When we move into flow, we take in more information per second, so data acquisition goes up. We pay more attention to that information, so salience goes up. Ask yourself, what kinds of impossible grand challenges would you guys go after? Would you solve in your own life? Would you try to solve in the world? If you could be 500% more productive, if you could be 600% more creative, if you could cut learning times in half, this is exactly what is available to each and every one of you today. But what you choose to do this, this information is entirely up to you.